Welcome to this brief overview of the functionality in the CatMe and TeamMaker system. The tutorial included with our award application provides information on how to find our web-based software at https www.catme.org. It also includes a sample username and password that you can use to log into the system for your testing. Once you get logged into the system, you'll see the faculty dashboard screen that gives information about surveys already in the system. At the beginning of a new term, the typical action is to add a new class. The system uses a multi-screen wizard to guide you through the class creation process. We'll enter a class name. You'll notice that most of the information on this screen is pre-filled, either based on the time that you're creating the survey or information in your faculty profile. The system allows you to customize the student's experience in various ways. In this case, we'll accept the defaults and the class is now created. When you're done setting up the class, you're taken to a screen where you can modify any of the information that you've entered in the wizard. Let's go ahead and create a survey. We've entered another multi-screen wizard that will now guide you through the survey creation process. TeamMaker surveys gather student information in order to form teams whereas CATME surveys are a peer evaluation instrument to assess team member effectiveness. You would normally start with the team maker survey. We'll enter the survey name. You can also customize the start and end dates on the survey. As you can see, there are a number of different questions that you can choose from to be included in the survey. You also have the option of editing the introductory text that was seen by the students prior to the survey. For now, let's just accept the defaults. Student rosters may be imported via CSV or tab delimited files. Essentially, if you can get your student roster into an Excel spreadsheet, you can easily export it in a form that can be consumed by our tool. A demo CSV file has been provided. Instructions for downloading that file are included in the tutorial we've provided. And importing your student roster really is that simple. The system supports large enrollment classes by allowing you to delegate sections to other faculty members or teaching assistants. We'll skip this functionality for now. The survey setup is now complete. Again, you're taken to a screen where you can modify any of the information that you entered in the wizard. This screen also allows you to preview the survey from the perspective of a student. Let's go ahead and do that. This is the instruction text that I mentioned that you could modify. This is a sample team maker survey. Uh, drop selects for selecting gender and race. A field where students can enter their GPA. The schedule matrix allows students to click times when they are unavailable for team activities. Obviously, clicking all of these checkboxes would be difficult, so the row headers can be clicked to busy all of the hours throughout the week. Similarly, the column headers can be clicked to busy out a day. Clicking the column header again unbusies that day. After every survey, students are given the opportunity to enter confidential comments that are passed back to the instructor. 
And that completes the preview of the Team Maker survey. Let's return to our faculty dashboard. You can see the survey we've created. To give you a sense of what team formation is like, we've pre-filled a survey with sample data. Let's go ahead and make teams in that survey. This screen gives you a summary of the data that was entered by the students, but more importantly, it allows you to set parameters that affect the team formation algorithm, such as what size teams you want. Reducing the weights on individual parameters tends to reduce their impact on the team formation algorithm. Let's go ahead and make teams. The team maker algorithm is an iterative process and takes a little bit of time to try and find optimal teams. Details about the algorithm can be found in the help text, which you can reach by clicking on the help link in the upper right hand corner at any time. In a small class like this, though, it doesn't take long to form teams. Why did TeamMaker choose these teams? Well, let's go ahead and look at the detailed data view to get a better idea of how the teams are formed. The detailed data view not only gives you the team information that you've seen before, but it also shows you the heuristic score information that the team maker algorithm uses in order to form teams. One of the things that's important to look at after teams have been formed is schedule compatibility within different teams. You can easily get a glimpse of the schedule compatibility for a team by mousing over this schedule summary link, which pops up a grid showing you when that team can meet for team-based activities. If you're unsatisfied with the teams for any reason, you always have the option of going back to the previous screen and changing the weighting parameters in order to form better teams. For now, though, let's go back to the teams we formed and go ahead and save these teams. Once you've saved the teams, you also have the option of releasing the information either to the students or the research team or both. Prior to releasing the results, you may want to preview the results from the student's perspective. Let's go ahead and look at the results for one of our students. Students see the other members of their team with clickable email links so that they can communicate with their other team members. They also see a schedule grid of when the team is available to meet. If you mouse over one of the hour blocks when only part of the teams is available, you actually see which students are available during that time. Returning to the screen where we can release the results, Let's go ahead and release the results to both students and the CATME research team. Now that we've actually formed teams with a team maker survey, we can actually use that data to create a peer evaluation survey. Let's go ahead and add a survey in this class. This time we'll be creating a peer evaluation survey. We'll enter the survey name. Once again, you can customize what questions are included in the survey and also customize the survey intro text. Because we've previously formed teams with our team maker survey, we have the option of selecting that survey from the list of previous surveys in the class and importing the team information from that survey. Again, we'll skip the delegation facility. And we've completed our survey 
using the teaming data from our TeamMaker survey. From the survey editor screen, you can also preview the peer evaluation instrument from the student's perspective. Again, here is the customizable instructions text. We use a behaviorally anchored rating scale. Students simply select the button next to the behaviors that most closely describe their teammates. The first column is for the student's rating of themselves, and then the other members of the student's team are listed in alphabetical order. Descriptions of the various behavioral rating parameters are included in the help text. We will simply move through the survey rapidly in the interests of time. Students would be required to fill in all data before being able to move forward in the survey. These follow-up questions provide you with additional information on team dynamics. And once again, the student is provided with the opportunity to make comments back to the instructor. Backing out to the class editor again, let's go ahead and look at the results of this peer evaluation survey that we've loaded with sample data. As with our TeamMaker surveys, you can actually preview the results that the students will see. Students are given a warning of any exceptional conditions that apply to them. In addition, for each behavioral category, the students see how they rated themselves, and then how that rating compares to how their teammates rated them, and how those ratings compare to the overall average rating for the team. In addition, we provide hints to the student to help them become better teammates for each of the behavioral characteristics. I'm going to go ahead and enable some additional functionality in this screen by enabling the pop-up text and hitting the redisplay button. Enabling the pop-up text allows you to view the student comments as pop-up boxes by mousing over the student's name. It also gives more information regarding these exceptional condition warnings that appear on the right-hand side of the screen. By analyzing the rating data from the students, our system is able to identify students who are underperforming, underconfident, high performing, and even students that may be having conflicts with other students in the class. More information on these exceptional conditions is provided in the help text. You can also view the raw data which includes the individual ratings supplied by all of the students, as well as a table with all of the student comments. Returning to the class page, and then backing out to the dashboard, this completes our overview of the functionality in the instrument. Thank you for your time, and enjoy using our system.